Now you should know what a web scraper is. If you don't know what a web scraper is, you probably shouldn't be on this video, but I'm gonna explain it anyways. Let's say you want information and you wanna get that information into your script. You use web scraping. Now you can do that with a headless browser, but that takes up a shit ton of resources. It's slow, it probably will fail, and it's stupid. So let's not do that and instead use requests. Requests are way easier, they're cooler. And the, the thing we're gonna use to make these requests is a library called Request Promise Native. Wonderful. You should be pretty familiar with the Request Promise whatever. I should probably create the project first. That's, that's probably really important. But yeah, we're gonna do Request Promise Native and then we're gonna get um, uh, a bunch of garbage when we, when we make a request to a website, we're gonna get a bunch of garbage HTML, and we want to navigate that with something called JS DOM. So let's get that as well. And let's get started making the project. So we're going to call in those those libraries really quickly. So let's just do const RP equals require request promise native. And then we'll do const JS DOM equals require JS DOM. And then we'll also deconstruct JS DOM like this equals JS DOM. All right, perfect. Now what are we going to be making? Well, it's funny you ask that we're going to be making a celebrity birthday grabifier thingy majiggy. So when you Google something, Google, what is Will, what was, what is Will Smith's birthday? You get Will Smith's birthday. It's right, it's right there. If we want this information, we can do that with our script. And to do that, we just have to act like we are the web browser. And what the web browser is doing when you send, when you send this link is it, it, it's making a get request to Google to this URL, which we can do in our script with no issues. So this is the URL it's sending the, the link to. If we if we take a look, we can we can spot some familiar patterns we should know about the internet. What we see here is I don't know if this is PHP or some shit, but it but it's cool. So you can see here, we can completely take this out all that garbage. And if we put that into our web browser, that's not right, we will get the same thing we searched. Very cool. So we can use that to our advantage here. So let's make some make make a function that makes this request like our web browser does. So we'll make the function called Google and we'll make what we want to search search term. Wonderful. We'll return a promise. If you don't know what a promise is, I'll explain it really nicely real quickly. So essentially we don't know when we're going to be getting this data back. So a promise is going to let us do dot then once this function is called. So we'll be able to do dot then. And then it'll give us the data we pass into the resolve function. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute here, but it's really, really simple. It seems really complicated when you first start, but it's not. Um, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll set the options. So let options equals it. If you, you should probably read the documentation for request promise native and JS DOM because you're not going to get shit and you're not going to learn anything if you don't. But if you're lazy like I was when I was learning this, um, you're going to completely ignore me when I say that. So that's cool. Thanks a lot. Um, what, we, what we have to do here is we have to make the request to the, the Google um, URL. So we have the Google URL here. Let's put that there and let's just pretty much copy it. So we go slash search question mark Q equals and then we'll put the search term whatever we want to search we can stuff in there since we're making a celebrity birthday finder we should do um instead of search term we'll do celebrity and then we'll do um what is plus and then we'll do celebrity and then plus this birthday and what that'll do is it'll search exactly what we searched on the left here just yeah without us having to do anything except type that in. So wonderful, we have the options, but we, we said earlier that we wanna mimic what the browser is doing, so we need to get our user agent. What the user agent does is it tells the page we're requesting what we are, what browser we're using, whether we're a phone, whether we're in uh, Windows, Mac, whatever, whether we're using Safari, Chrome, you know. And so Google also lets you see it, but there's lots of things that can tell you user agent. What is my user agent? You can Google that and then it'll just give you yours. So let's take that and let's just set the headers. Headers are what, what uh, authentication gets sent in the request. So we'll set the headers to the user agent to pretend like we're sending this from, from this, from my browser. Wonderful. Um, and then we'll also make sure we're sending a get request. So method 
Again, I'm not sure if it does it by default. I'm not taking any chances. I don't feel like wasting time or misleading you. So let's just do that. And then we're done. We're done that. So we can do RP, pass, pass in the options. Now this returns a promise too. So we're going to do dot then. And then we're going to get a bunch of HTML code. And to prove that to you, I'm going to run it really quickly. Like that. Wonderful. Node index.js. And you'll see it doesn't. Oh, we didn't call the function. Okay. Uh, we'll do Google. And then we'll just pass in uh, Will Smith. And that doesn't matter right now. But we'll do it anyways. Node index.js this anymore you'll see it'll just throw a bunch of garbage in there yeah there it is all right um so we'll actually resolve the html here no we won't yes we will no we won't all right let's uh, let's start getting ready with a js dom so what we'll do here is we'll we'll deconstruct it further and we'll go let document equals oh, no equals um what do you do new js dom HTML.window. And what this will do is it will um, allow us to navigate the page as if we were in a browser on, on Google Chrome. So let's look here at our browser and let's say we can do Control Shift I to get the developer's console. And if you look in the console, you can do things like document.query selector. If you're familiar with this, that's all good. Um, you'll know exactly what to do. But let's say we want to get the content of this element. We can find the class name or ID of it. So this is the class that we use, document.query selector. Since it's a class, we use dot. If it was an ID, we would use the hashtag, but it's dot. It'll, you'll see it'll select the element. We can then do text content and get whatever's in there. Um, but in this case, we want access to this birthday. So what we'll do is we'll go into the, develop, the developer's console, get this, and then we'll navigate it in our code as if we were in the developer's console. So let's go here and make sure it works. So let's do document.query selector. It's not that query selector and you'll see I've already done this before let's just do it again uh, paste that in there text content and you'll see it does it returns the birthday cool now Will Smith is an old guy Jesus Christ all right let no oh, let's let you see this let birthday equals document dot query selector and we'll go ahead and copy that class if, yeah there we go copy the class in there dot text content and then that would have returned the birthday. So then we can resolve the birthday. And now, whenever it um, whenever it resolves, whatever we get back, it'll give us the birthday. So we can just birthday right there. Now, if this fails for whatever reason, if we're sending too many requests, or if it just start Google servers are down or something, we want to be able to reject it. And then once we reject it, we want to catch it here so that it doesn't crash our script and ruin our day. All right, now um, we can do console.log birthday node index.js and you'll see it'll return back like whatever September 25th. Yep. Now <clears throat> to make things a little simpler, we'll resolve name and then we'll throw in the celebrity name and we'll do birthday and we'll, we'll throw in the birthday. Now what this will do is allow us to be, do this essentially just prettyfy everything. So we can do um, info instead of birthday. Info dot name this is birthday is on, and then info dot birthday. And then as you can see, our script will properly tell us when and whose birthday is on that date, like so. Wonderful. So you can adapt this however you want. That's essentially how you scrape the web in 28 lines of code. Ha! <laughs>